nurse's tail towards the end of the up is one of the more difficult movements. It presents all sorts of technical and interpretive problems. And perhaps it's supposed to. If you had heard my talk about the allegorical and symbolic meaning of the complete album, then you know that at this point in the cycle, the child's day is coming to an end and um, they are being entertained by their nurse. But if you see the album as the story of a man's life, a much more fascinating interpretation this is the time in a person's life when they begin to know evil, when they begin to see that monsters walk among us and perhaps even inside us. This makes Nurse's Tale much more fascinating and much more fun to play. We need that because the piece is really quite technically challenging. First, of course, there is the ever-present staccato. If you've heard my talks about other movements from the children's album, then you know I advocate two different ways of playing a short and sharp staccato. One is the flicking motion or scratching the key, and one is poking the key. In this movement, I think the poking staccato works very much better because it allows us also to deal with difficulty number two, which is keeping the chords completely simultaneous. If you are busy moving the fingers independently, the chances of them coming down exactly simultaneously are not fabulous. But if you decide that you prefer more of the poking staccato, which I highly recommend, your fingers are actually very well organized. You're playing from the bridge. Your fingers are pretty much locked in position, which means you can angle the hand in whichever way works to play the notes exactly together. Sometimes it could be towards the short finger on the top, or sometimes it could be towards the short finger on the bottom. Either way, you should play always from the very surface of the key. If you allow any air between your fingertip and the key before you strike it, the keys are not very likely to go down at the same time, especially as some of these notes are in black keys, right? Which are already located higher. And calculating that difference while you're in the air is way too difficult. It's much easier to touch first and poke second. So now that we've got the notes being absolutely simultaneous, now we have to decide which of them are melody. There are so many different ways to voice here. For example, you can decide that the melody is always on the top. It's a decision. two in the right and two in the left, and any of these lines may be melody. So how about start with the melody in the right hand where the ear expects it, and then switch to the left. Ooh, it's a lot scarier this way, right? Fun, fun, fun. So now that we've got our staccato notes, being sharp and our melodies brought out. Now let's talk about the rhythm. So this is two, four, and it goes one and two, rest one and two, rest. Oh my goodness, that's as straightforward as you can get. But is it though? If you play it exactly evenly like this, you're going to get not much of an interesting story. When you have a piece with this many rests as part of the melody, you have to decide if the rest might not be a lot more important than its proportional value. So in the first measure, for example, the rest gets a quarter of the whole value, which is an eighth. One, two, three, four. But what if it got a little more? To keep the measure exactly the same, you would then have to squish the notes together just a little bit. of 
expectation and of magic that we got exactly right for the nurse's tale. In the middle section, that rhythmic lilt that we're creating by pushing some notes a little bit closer together and making room for the rest becomes an even more important feature. exaggerating a little bit for effect, but did you hear how I made the last eighth note of each measure, which is in the right hand, come in early and stay a little bit longer, where the left hand notes were a little bit faster than their value. To me, this creates this sense of breathless excitement. Whatever is going on in the fairy tale here apparently is all action. Then we have the fun accents in the middle section and in the coda. So many students are scared to make what they consider an ugly sound. Sounds that are ugly, but in reality are just a little bit on the harsh side, are part of this marvelous palette that a modern grand piano makes available to us. And it's okay to be on that edge unless you play like that a long time. After all, remember, we're talking about a fairy tale. If you have never heard Russian fairy tales, what I can tell you is they're a lot closer to Brothers Grimm rather than Dr. Seuss. All kinds of bad things happen. All kinds of scary things happen. It's okay for children to be frightened and it's okay for us to make a sound that perhaps crosses the line for you a little bit. This makes the whole performance so much more exciting.